Good morning, everybody. March 18th, 2018 here on the Rancho. And it is time once again for Coffee Time Sunday. And uh, Jen, we really enjoy and our subscribers really enjoy these uh, Coffee Time Sundays too. It's a chance for us to free wheel a little bit. Get away from the four minute, uh, three, four minute videos and really drill down on subjects here. And uh, one of the things that we wanted to talk about was retirement. Now that we've, I uh, think, good morning to you, Missy Jen. Nice morning, to see Jessica. you today, as <clears throat> per usual. One of the things that we uh, have talked about uh, and discussed as we traveled our 7,636 mile journey is what would work for us when my working career comes to an end. Now, Missy Jen's pretty convinced come December, come January 1st, 2019, the rosy girl will still be on the job. <laughs> we'll no, she will be retired. <laughs> will still be on the job, She'll pumping away, <laughs> or signed on like the Marine Corps for another hit. If, <laughs> uh, if she signs on again, I will have to just smack her down. Now, the upside of that is I get to... Uh, build up quite a stash of money uh, smack her down. <laughs> towards retirement and in the interim mm -hmm. we have a chance to uh, do our usual uh, this year we're going to get back on track our week in San Diego we always enjoy down there that's always a good time so that's yeah. definitely hard on you the like schedule. being on the beach now yeah so and I think great. you enjoy being mm -hmm. you know having to walk along the uh, promenade there I like the see. promenade and uh, and there's always some things to see with that driving extensively. You know, we've never gone to Balboa Park and some other things yeah. in San so Diego. there's still things to see. And yeah. there's terrible always there. But we're always and thinking so about, uh, <clears throat> we're always thinking about retirement. And although we do love, and Jen, I know on a hangout last night, we talked about if we could live someplace, we would, we would both choose to be where we are right now because we'd like the NorCal area well, that might just change for me. well you know what i'm saying for general living you know when you talk about access to top flight you know world-class medical care in the world you're talking about university of california san francisco where you go for your neurology con consultations we're talking about world-class universities with stanford and uh, berkeley and uh, santa clara university you're talking about silicon valley and there's a lot of stuff around here there's a lot of cultural stuff there's san francisco so it's a wine country you like driving around in the wine country and the beautiful vistas of all that so there's a lot to be said here but the the winter times are dreary there's no doubt about it no, the times are rough, yeah. Yeah, I mean, rough in the sense that we're not going to get snow, and but it can be miserable day after day. You, you get teased with maybe 10 minutes of sunshine a day, and then big black clouds are, are rolling in. And it truly is a Mediterranean climate. And until I lived in California, Missy Jen, I never understood really what that meant. And what that means is all of your rain for the whole year is compressed into three or four months and then it's absolutely dry yeah for the other eight months of the year absolutely dry with no no rainy days whatsoever i've never encountered a climate like that that would be so defined so uh, one of my goals and the things i've talked about a lot on here jen is the ability to bypass these three or four months and to be in a uh, sunny climate and, one of the reasons we wanted to go down to Florida was to look around there and see what it was, uh, see what it was like. And we've gotten a lot of good advice. And one of the things we wanted to do was solicit some feedback from you guys today, because Missy Jen says, uh, you know, I don't want us buying and committing year one because it may not be our cup of tea. And then we have a situation where we're kind of on the hook for, you know, if we buy a single wide or a double wide. Uh, or a park model, we're kind of on the hook for God knows how long for monthly lot rent and maintenance and, you know, the ongoing bills of maintaining that. So our latest thought was to get a place maybe for a rental, and we can thank Joey D for this, maybe get a rental, try it out and see what we think of the, uh, see what we think of the rental and right. if we like it 
it may be that we want to pick different places around the country, like southern Arizona one year, maybe southern Texas, Galveston, uh, uh, Baton Rouge, or a place like that, or even Hawaii for three months to take off to a place like uh, Hawaii or something like that for a rental. So there's a lot of things to consider. And now that I think about that, I think it makes a lot of sense to be able to not get too deeply invested in something where it may not work oh, out. I don't want to tie, tie, tie down <clears throat> immediately to something and then be stuck. Be stuck. With something. Now the downside of that is when you pay up for peak rentals, when you pay up for the peak season, you're going to pay top buck to be in those kind of places. Measured in you know, 800 to 1,000 to 1,200, 1,500 dollars a week to be in some of those places, even the dingiest park models. But there are things like seasonal uh, rentals that takes the affordability factor up because a lot of people that own property, given renting to one person and dealing with one person for 12 to 16 weeks versus this week somebody else is coming in next week and having to deal with the cleaning and all that kind of stuff, it's a lot less hassle and they're willing to give you know, the discounts are implied within the pricing to get people in that are going to be there for the long, the long term. And I think Florida is built on that a lot. I mean, if you want short term, you stay in hotels like we did. And we stayed at the, what was it, the uh, Hampton down there, the Ramada Inn or whatever, Hampton, Hampton Inn. Inn. <clears throat> and that was like 220 a night down there for peak season. Yeah, it's very hot down there. Now, we could have gone a lot cheaper in there, but... Yeah. Uh, you know, one of my goals is to make sure that Missy Jen's We need to just, I think, get something very small that is doesn't take much effort to clean. All we're going to take is clothing anyways. We won't have anything hobby-wise. Everything stays here. So. Yeah, you want to just outfit. I, I think that's probably true, Jen, with just basic so two boxes a year. So it's just going to be like our clothing and... Uh, you know, you get the van or whatever, you load it up with two boxes. There, so. One box of cooking gear from the place here, and the, the other box with, uh, you know, flatware and whatever else, plates and dishes and everything else. And then you, you just shop locally for food. Yeah, right. like Jen said, you take one suitcase each for all the clothes, right. and that's, that's and it. That's it. That's all we got. Try to keep things as simple as possible. Now on the upside, some of these park models are really cheap, measured in $2,500 and right on up. I mean, they're older ones. A lot of them are probably coming unhinged at the seams and things like that. But uh, if you're good with your hands and you're able to restore and fix things up and make things good again, it can be a good deal there. But you're still faced with the prospect of four or $500 a month lot rent, even if you're not around. Right. Which brings the idea of uh, condos and permanent purchase, there are parks that you permanently buy your uh, spots and then your monthly maintenance is, you know, $80, $100 a month, something like that. You actually own the piece of land along with your spot on there. So it's, there are That's, a couple different uh, ways. So we kind of wanted you guys to weigh in on this. Yeah, uh, how do you do that? How do you live in two places? And then just live four months, basically, uh, kind of like with a suitcase full of clothing for four months. How do you do that? Well, I think it's done. It's called, I just uh, have a lot of questions on that. You've got uh, people that are called <clears throat> snowbirds that come down from Canada. They do it every year from the northern, particularly up in the Midwest, really piles into... Uh, and how do you arrange your banking? How do you arrange your... How do you arrange your insurance paperwork? If you have paperwork that needs to be filed, how do you arrange all your other stuff? If you have things that you need to do in that time period, how do you do that? My guess is Those for things like things. banking, things like uh, paperwork, <clears throat> simply having a forwarding address, a temporary forwarding address is uh, the solution to those type of things. It might take an extra two days to reach you, but it will reach you. I mean, the postal service is still pretty efficient with uh, things to be done. Uh, you put in those little yellow cards, the mail forwarding and that. So I think we will just give it a try. We'll just get out of here next year for four months and leave. And... Uh, 
give it a try and flower it now. And uh, yeah, so maybe somebody in the Tampa, somebody in the Largo, Clearwater area around there has a rental, and if they're interested in maybe uh, and then, uh, renting it up take to it us from there, just live the simplest life this can be with a suitcase full of clothing and uh, just take it from there yeah, so have the forwarding address and then uh, yeah take it from there take it from there and then i think either you either establish that things worked out conveniently or else it was a real pita pain in the you know what and at the end of the day, it just didn't end up being worth it. But the beautiful thing is if you're just on a rental, you just walk away and say, you know what? Thanks, but no thanks. That's not really not really for us. And because of that, Jen, I think that that really makes that, uh, really makes that pretty ideal in that regard. Anyway, if you have any suggestions for us or you want to do a little video response with ideas on you know, if you are a snowbird and you are temporarily relocated, a lot of the uh, people our age, they do have medical issues and things. They do need medications to be able to pick up. They do have to deal with mail being forwarded, bills at home. And we would be interested to in hearing from you if you uh, have any thoughts on how that works out for you and how streamlined that is and what the upsides and downsides of that are that right. would be very interesting for particularly for missy jen because uh, her needs are much greater especially when it comes to uh, medications and uh, treatment she has very good insurance coverage for medical uh, yeah i have certain appointments that i will probably have to like see a doctor down there that will a neurologist down there that will see me down there to do the blood work and everything or else we just align things so the day before we leave, then she has her last appointment for the next 90 days or 120 so. days, and then it's done. So a lot of things to consider there on uh, Coffee Time Sunday. Thanks so much for being so along. Yeah, everyone. share your tips and tricks and all that. How do you do things? How do you make things work? And if you have a vehicle that you leave at home for such a long time, what do you do to mothball that vehicle in? Uh, do you need to disconnect? Do you kind of disconnect the battery? Do you need uh, to sure. like, do something with the oil, whatever? Put the oil stabilizer in, disconnect the so. battery, and go, baby. All right, guys, thank you very much for being along uh, today. We always love seeing you in Coffee Time Sunday. Yeah, we look forward to hearing from you. So have a wonderful day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.